Hi everybody, this is a very quick video on how to change stimulus duration in the Brain Analyzer Nearest Toolbox. Uh, I actually have loaded in a data set uh, into uh, the Nearest Toolbox. I've, I used the load nearx function uh, right here and saved the output as raw. You'll notice I have the variable right here. Uh, in most experiments, you're going to have some sort of task happening, especially if it's a block paradigm, you'll have a task happening for some set duration. Uh, in this, when you load in uh, data, you can actually find this duration. They'll have a default value. In your raw data, you select one of your subjects here. You'll notice I have uh, subjects one through 10 over here. Uh, each of the subjects will have a stimulus sub variable right here. If I open that up, this sub variable has keys, values, and an account. You'll notice I have two um, events, event types. Uh, if I open up values here, the values are going to be in the format of, of one uh, row per the number of conditions for columns. If I open that up, you'll notice the duration is saved right here under the dur dur uh, variable. The format of this, if I open it up, is one column by the number of occurrences of that uh, stimulus type. And the default value when you load it into uh, the nearest toolbox or the brain analyzer toolbox is one. If you use the I, know, I mentioned here, let me back up. I mentioned here I use the load near x function. Other functions will actually have other default values. I think the load dot nearest function has uh, the uh, frame length in seconds uh, for, the, for the duration. Uh, that said, so now you have a quick quick view of, of what it looks like in, in a sense. I want to actually show you how to how to alter this. So the reason you'd want, want to alter this is, uh, as I mentioned, in, in most experiments, you'll have some duration of a task. It won't typically just be on and off. Uh, you'll do it for a number of seconds or something like that. Uh, assuming you have a block average, we're going to move forward with this and kind of go through a default way of how you, how you can do this. And also keep in mind, most experiments, you don't, usually don't have kind of a, a automatic tracker for your durations. You don't have that loaded into your data sets. Uh, most data sets only track the onset of a task, not necessarily the duration, and they require you to input that at a later time, which is what we're going to do here. So first, it, it's pretty useful to actually find the duration uh, in, your, in, your, in your data. Uh, you can actually flip through the, 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 the variables like I just did, where you open up each individual part. You can explore the data pretty well using that, which is quite helpful. Or you can actually call it uh, in the command line. So here you'll say, see I have my raw variable, which is what I saved my data as. I'm going to select a subject number. I'm going to do dot stimulus dot values curly brackets, and I'm going to select these, uh, which stimulus I want. And again, we have two stimulus in this, in this condition. Uh, just to give you a background, this was a uh, left and right finger tapping test. So let's go back into MATLAB here. We're going to actually do that. So raw, select my subject, we'll do subject one, dot stimulus, dot values. I do curly brackets. Let's do trigger uh, number one or, or condition number one, dot dir. When I hit that, I get a return of one column with three rows. This basically tells me that I have three occurrences of that stim stimulus, each of which uh, has a duration of one second. Uh, if I want to alter this, I can actually do, let's say, subject three. I do values one. I get the same same output there as, as one column of, of all ones. Uh, if I wanted to change to condition two, I would do condition two, and you have the same value there. You'll notice all the conditions are the same. That may not always be the case, but but for, for our sake today, that's what we'll go with. Uh, keep in mind, the format of this output will be the number of conditions as your rows by one column. If you actually want to change it, which is the whole point of this, we're going to assume in this case that we have a duration of 10 seconds. It's It just so happens that we actually did. Uh, we're also going to assume that group raw is the name of my raw data in this case. The format of this raw data is the number of subjects by one column. So if I have 10 subjects, I have 10 columns, it's going to be in a cell, and I have uh, one column. So first, uh, it's likely you're going to want the, the stimulus names. You can always change the stimulus names. Uh, that's covered in another video. Uh, but we want to just extract the stimulus names. We want to see what they're called. So I'm going to go in my nearest folder. There's a function called get stim names, and I'm going to call it on my raw, va raw variable. 
Uh, I use this function at MATLAB function called unique, which unique will just basically ignore duplicate um, values. So it gives me only the individual uh, stimulus names I have, and I output it as stim names. Uh, next, you're actually going to want to figure out how many uh, different types of stimuli you have. So all you have to do is get the length of stim names and save it as stim count. And finally, this little for loop here will actually do all the damage for you. So I'm going to have a stim index. Basically, it's going to go one one by one through the number of stim uh, stimuli that I have. So here it's stim index equals one to the total count of stimulus. I'm going to output my var the same variable that I'm putting in. I'm going to output. So I'm, I'm just going to overwrite my raw data. You don't have to. You can always save it as a new, new variable if you want to save the raw data. Uh, you go into the nearest folder under the design subfolder is a function called change underscore stimulus underscore duration. So that's how we would call it here. And if you notice, I'll, I'll jump into MATLAB. Uh, I have to go to my nearest toolbox. Actually, it's nearest toolbox. When I pop that up, I go to my nearest folder under design, which is right there. And there is change stimulus duration dot m that is actually what we'll be calling here first you input your data what you're actually going to be changing uh, then you're going to put which stimulus it was you can either do it as a text uh, an exact text of that stimulus name or in this case i can go one by one through the variable that i created here which is a list of all the stimulus names and here i assumed it was a stimulus duration of 10. i input that as my final input and I'm going to run it for each stimulus. Uh, if your stimuli are not each 10 and you have to do it individually, this for loop won't necessarily work for you, but this line of code should. You just basically replace this section with a text uh, line for the name of your stimuli, which you actually have in the stim names uh, folder here. And then you can do uh, alternating values. You can change the values as needed. I do hope that was helpful. Uh, that'll get you off and running, or it should get you off and running and changing the stimulus durations in the toolbox.